Hey, welcome back. Uh, it's hard to believe we're on episode 20 already. Unless you're counting. If you're counting, then this is actually only episode 19. Because the way this job has been going, there's no way I was doing an episode 13. But uh, I want to thank you for watching this far. And I, I tell you, it's hard to believe that we're at 20 episodes. Um, when I started to do this, I mean, really, <clears throat> I was recording it mostly so that I knew how I took things apart from when I put them back together. And then uh, as we started getting into it, we realized that there really wasn't any information about this type of boat uh, that we could find. So we wanted to get that information out there. And uh, then as we went on further, we realized that when you watch a lot of videos, um, you'll see somebody do a, uh, a build in 20 minutes. They just time lapse the whole thing. And uh, it's that's not the way it works. Um, we're trying to make this as real as we can. I, I do try to speed up some of the really boring parts because there's a lot of that. But if you watch one of my videos, you're going to get an idea as to what you're going to encounter if you go ahead and try to do one of these builds yourselves. Now, I'm not a professional boat builder. I'm not a professional boat fixer. I'm a captain. Uh, I'm a driver. But uh, because of that, I've, I've worked on boats practically my whole life. Um, never did anything as intense as this. But... Um, I'm sure we're going to have at least at least a few more episodes to go um, as we get and we start to put this thing back together. We still got to power it up. We're going to get this wrapped. Uh, then we have the whole trailer to work on. So this is going to go on for a little while. But the one thing I, I will promise you is that I'm always going to show you um, what really is going on. I'm not going to I'm not going to delete the scenes where I screwed something up because I've screwed a lot of stuff up uh, but this way if you get to see what the screw-ups are how I went about fixing them it'll give you a little more confidence when you go ahead and uh, try to do a repair on your own all right well thanks a lot and sit back and enjoy episode 20 thanks all right we're gonna start putting the uh, the final coat on some of this stuff today um, this right here is ready for our final coat. Um, this in the console will be the first thing that we get done. There's a console over there. So we'll get, get these two things done first. But one thing I wanted to, to show you again, I'm not a professional here. I'm just a, just a captain trying to fix his boat. But one of the things I found, I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to see it. You see there's some lines. Actually, the lines going across this way. A little bit that way. But you can see some lines in here. What those lines are from is here you can actually see this one right, right, right by the bug. Um, what those lines are from is as we were putting the um, as we were putting the the first coat and second coat down what we were doing is uh, we were we were tipping it with a brush um, so we tipped it and then the next layer we put on we tipped it in the opposite way so what we were doing is really making a checkerboard on top of a uh, a checkerboard so it was creating a thickness about equal to the depth of the brushes, the brush strokes, which was fine um, because I was building us up some, some gel coat on here. Uh, but what I did the last coat, so there's, this will be the fourth, fourth coat I'm putting on here. Um, the last coat, what I did is I just used a foam roller and we just went over it with the foam roller. And what I was hoping to do is to go ahead and, and fill in all of the uh, marks from the brushes. And what I found is that the, 
the texture I was getting was really kind of like an orange peel, almost like you would get if you sprayed this. So uh, it doesn't bother me right now. It might bother me when I'm sanding. Uh, we'll find out. But I, you know, like I said, I got, I got a pretty good layer of gel coat on here, so I should be able to, to get this thing sanded smooth. Um, so this final coat, we're going to go ahead and mix it up with a little bit of wax, uh, about 2% wax. And then um, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll get it on there and let it set and uh, see how it sands. Uh, let me go mix up some gel coat. Hate to say it, but even with our ice bath, um, yeah, we basically, we ruined, uh, oh, probably about 10 ounces. So, thought I had it figured out, but I guess not, so. All right, so we're gonna get ready to uh, prep our back seat, which is back there. We're gonna go ahead and, um, See if we can take care of a few of these these little burn throughs. Um, so we're gonna need to prep them because we've we've already uh, compounded this. It hasn't been waxed yet, but we want to make sure we don't have any wax in that compound. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a little little comet. and a scotch bright just to make sure that if there is any wax on here we get it off and we'll go around and we'll do that to all the spots that we have right now so we won't we're Painting that back there, we can just come over here and touch these up too.
right, so you can see this is the next coat. You can still see some of our lines from our brush marks, but that's okay because once we fill those lines in, we're going to have a nice thick layer of gel coat. So we'll let this one set up and on to the next one. All right, so we got all of our laminating coats of gel coat on here now. Our next layer is going to be uh, one with wax. So you can see, if I get in here close enough to single focus, you can barely tell where those big heavy brush marks were. So we know we're pretty thick. And we'll have one more coat on top of this. Uh, we do need to do one more laminating layer of this strip. And we wanted to do these strips because once we get this thing sanded and uh, buffed out, we're going to do the same thing on these strips and we'll be able to put our sides up. Once we put our sides up, then we can go ahead and, and lay our tape out to do our gel coat on the rest of this. So we also gel coated, um, we got two coats on that. So that's ready for it's finished. We're going to put another finished coat on this hatch too while we're at it. And uh, we'll be moving right along. But now we got to go ahead and mix up our, our finished coat. And you can see, I just left. We got wasps moved into here. You can see them right there. Whoop, you got out. So that's uh, another fun thing we got to deal with. This is our fuel fill. And um, they moved in. Surprisingly, that, that's the only place they've moved into while we've been working on this. But they just made their house there last week. So they're going to have to move already. All right, let's get mixing. All right, so we started to sand this. And we realized right away that we were picking up these... Uh, hunks of gel coat. Now when something like that happens that usually means gel coat hasn't cured all the way. Now this we thought this should have. Um, we had given it plenty of time. You can see it's not it's a little sticky. I mean not really. I, if you didn't know what sticky felt like on gel coat you would think that this felt fine. But um we knew there was a problem. Now, since I've made enough mistakes on uh, gel coat in the past, I'm used to problems, so I can easily identify them. Uh, but we had to figure out what, what I did wrong this time. So usually it's um, mixing something improperly. We didn't put enough hardener in, or um, didn't put enough wax in, or something like that. and. It took a while on this one because, you know, what I was planning on doing here, sorry about this wind, um, is this was a final coat. We really didn't need it, but there was a, uh, a burn through that we had up there we wanted to patch up and um, just there was a few spots we wanted to build it up a little more. So we were going to do just a final coat on this. And a few other spots on the boat, we were just doing a quick final coat. And I realized, um, I forgot to put wax in it. Yeah, so that's that's totally on me. Um, if you don't put wax in the gel coat, if, if you're using unwaxed gel coat, which is what we use, it's a, a laminating gel coat, so we can put multiple layers on. Um, if you don't put wax, it's never going to get hard. You're never going to never going to be able to sand it without that and that's this is not a bad piece I mean I had some that were I don't think it was the wind some that were fully fully covered and uh, yeah you'll see things like this um, yeah it's a mess but the good thing is is uh, figured out what the problem was it wasn't anything big it wasn't like my gel coat was bad or you know, something stupid like that. It was just a uh, friendly wasp. Um, 
I need to mix in some some Joko with some wax. So what's going to happen is we'll go ahead and we'll wipe this down real quick with some uh, acetone. We'll hit it again with uh, some Joko with wax in it and um, let that set up and we'll be able to come through here and uh, sand this down and put those seat tops on and get this thing going. It's, you know, right now I'm, I'm to the point where we're, we're almost ready to put the, the sides on this thing. And it's like every time I turn around, I, I see something else I want to just do real quick before I put the sides on. And um, yeah, we just want to get that done. All right, let's go ahead and mix up some gel coat and finish this thing up. our way out of the box. If you remember from the video, I actually might not have might not have recorded this part, but um, when I was doing the gel coat, cleaning up, I dropped some acetone, spilled some acetone, and it went all over my drill, and uh, wiped it up. Didn't seem, you know, no worse for the matter, except I went to go use it today. Yeah, the forward and reverse button. Is seized. I tried tapping it with a hammer and uh, that wasn't doing it but it looks like if you look around here the um, yeah the acetone kind of melted everything together so I'll try to put some acetone on there and see if I can get it to free up because it's stuck in reverse Give that a little bit to eat, eat away some of the plastic. We'll grab a hammer here. Let's 
can't fix it on anything else sometimes the hammer will do the trick let's go ahead and flip this over No, it's stuck in the middle. All right, we got forward. Uh-oh. We might either have forward or reverse here. All right, well, at least we got forward. You can see where the acetone ate the plastic. Reverse, forward, let's uh, put a little WD-40 on that. Hammer and WD-40, little duct tape and your toolbox is complete. It's working easier. So there you go. How to fix a drill with WD-40 and a hammer.